What's up guys, it's Stockpicks by Tim, and I finally got Bingo's earnings. I didn't realize it was yesterday. I was too busy cutting up Lucid and uh, Astra's earnings. But if you didn't see those, go check them out. This video is just going to be uh, Bingo's earnings, kind of cut up. It is about a half an hour long. But if you want to watch the full version, I will leave a link down below in the description for you. Now they do cite that typically this is a slow part of the year, but they did see a nice year-over-year -year increase in revenue. And it's also good to see, though, that they are in line with their expectations for their full year guidance. And next quarter, they do expect about 6 to 6.5 million, which is a nice increase over this quarter in the 5 million range. But if you like these consolidated earnings call videos, don't forget to like and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. And let's get into it. I want to begin today's call with a summary of some key business highlights. So revenue was $5.7 million for Q1 2022, which represents an 80% year-over-year increase compared to the same period of 2021. In this first quarter of 2022, the revenue was a record for any first quarter in the company's history. Our Sapphire install base grew to 176 systems as of March 31st, 2022, which represents 64% growth over Q1 2021. In the quarter, we sold 3,225 flow cells. That represents a 24% year-over-year increase compared to the same period in 2021. And we ran 329 samples in BioNano laboratories in the first quarter of 2022. And that's a 45% year-over-year increase, year over year increase from the same period in 2021. We counted some 42 publications on optical genome mapping, or OGM, in the quarter, and we announced publication of the first readout of our ongoing clinical study in postnatal genetic diseases, which reported strong data that we believe will allow completion of the study this year. BioNano Symposium, which is the quintessential event for the OGM community, kicked off this year with a 63% increase in average daily attendance over 2021, which was the first year that we hosted Symposium. And this year it included 31 presentations, 37 posters, all of which highlighted OGM's utility in a variety of applications across genetic diseases, cancer, and analysis for bioprocessing and gene editing. Our customers are consistently excited about the capabilities of optical genome mapping, and they are working with us to evangelize optical genome mapping around the world. Now, I want to take a moment to speak about the performance of our stock price. As you know, our sector of growth stocks and healthcare has experienced a greater impact than has the broader market. While we are disappointed with the performance over the past several months, our focus as leaders of the company is on executing our long-term growth plan hitting our milestones that we outlined during our last call and we will revisit today, which have been designed to drive value. We're pleased that we have achieved all of our anticipated milestones in 2021, and we expect to achieve those stated milestones for 2022. Looking ahead to the rest of this year, our financial guidance remains on track, and the company expects Full year 2022 revenues to be in the range of 24 to 27 million dollars, which would represent a range of 33 to 50 percent growth over full year 2021 revenue. And we expect the second quarter 2022 revenues to be in the range of 6 to 6.5 million. With our current Sapphire system, we believe we have a product that is suitable for most labs worldwide but those labs account for only about half of the volume of samples. The balance of volume is concentrated in a smaller number of labs we estimate to be fewer than 500 that run very high volumes around the world. Some of those institutions are currently evaluating the Sapphire system and establishing their plans for many development, but we believe a higher throughput system will be important if we want to capture that volume. In addition to targeting these high-volume segments of the market, there are other segments, including those outside the U.S., that will benefit if that system is eventually taken through a process of FDA clearance. With this new generation of system, 
we intend to begin the process of taking it through the FDA after it's commercially released in 2023. It's important to note that with Sapphire, which doesn't have FDA clearance, we believe we can address the majority of labs and testing volumes in markets we are currently targeting. But we also believe having FDA approval for the next instrument can expand our total available market and accelerate global adoption. So that will be a key advancement. This quarter, we launched version 6.2 of NX clinical software with an integrated genomic SCAR analysis for homologous recombination deficiency, or HRD. And this feature provides a comprehensive, consistent, and automated analysis of biomarkers from next generation sequencing and microarray data that can help clinical researchers stratify therapeutic response across multiple tumor types. This analysis allows cancer researchers to gain important insights from genetic, genetic data that they're already generating from arrays and sequencing. And we believe this product will be useful to next generation sequencing users focused on oncology by providing them with a powerful tool for visualization, interpretation, and reporting of their data. The first, first quarter of 2022 is another great quarter for BioNano. We demonstrated strong performance in the face of our typical Q1 seasonal softness and the macro headwinds that Eric mentioned. We recorded significant year-over-year -year revenue growth and continued the steady growth in the install base of Sapphire OGM systems. Our revenue in the first quarter of 2022 was $5.7 million, in line with our previous guidance range of 5.5 to 5.8 million. This result is an increase of 2.5 million, or 80%, over the first quarter of 2021. Compared to the fourth quarter of 2021, results were consistent with the typical seasonality that we see in our business. Gross margin for the first quarter came in at 15%, compared to 33% in the first quarter of 2021, and just 4% in the fourth quarter of 2021. The year-over-year -year decrease was primarily due to lower yields on our chip consumables produced at one of our contract manufacturers. We are making good progress with our supplier and have started to see improvement to our yields. First quarter 2022 GAAP operating expense was $30.8 million compared to $12.2 million in the first quarter of the prior year. The year-over-year -year increase in OPEX was primarily due to increased headcount-related spending, increased R&D expense, and increased marketing expense. We ended the first quarter with 309 employees, up from 164 employees in Q1 of 2021. Going forward, we expect the growth in headcount and spending to moderate from the pace of growth we saw last year. We continue to be well capitalized with $216.5 million in cash, cash equivalents, and available for sale securities as of March 31st, 2022. As Eric mentioned, we remain on track to our full year 2022 revenue guidance to be in the range of 24 to $27 million. Q2 revenue is expected to be in the range of 6 to $6.5 million. And I want to close with a review of our milestones for this year. And we're on track to achieve our Elevate 2022 milestones. As we outlined on our last call, we have several milestones for the plan for this year across the five pillars of Elevate, including in reimbursement, clinical studies, expanding awareness, and product development. In the first quarter, we plan to receive IRB approval for our hematologic study and to apply for a Category 1 CPT code for optical genome mapping. And I'm pleased to say that both were completed. We're enrolling subjects in the HEME study and gathering feedback from the CPT code application process. And we, of course, look forward to updating you on the milestones that we're going to be achieving here in the second quarter and over the course of the remainder of the year. All right, guys, hope you're enjoying so far. Now I'm going to leave you with the key points from the Q&A. Let's get it. Um, could you give kind of your idea of what you think of the application utilization of Sapphire, the type of customer, and what the addressable market looks like for Sapphire on the other side of the clinical programs, assuming that gets you reimbursement into the clinical guidelines? Um, essentially, how would a Sapphire system with validated and reimbursed diagnostic use in those four markets be used differently from how it is today? I think that... We kind of understand this roadmap because 
it's been followed before for other solutions such as microarrays and next generation sequencing in certain applications. And so clearly today, people who are applying optical genome mapping in their clinical research are using it to find more answers. And increasingly, they're integrating the information they get from analysis with optical genome mapping together with sequencing analysis to provide really a comprehensive view of genome variation, which can answer questions about why a particular phenotype exists. But in many settings, they're being used for research applications that begin to investigate patients or subjects in a clinical research study who may have been negative by traditional methods in standard testing, and so they're enrolled in a clinical trial to explore why they're negative by standard of care and yet clearly exhibiting the, the symptoms and signs of a genetic disease or cancer. So the answers to those questions are powerful research findings that can define future tests or future interventions and maybe even pull in some existing interventions that were missed by the standard of care for some reasons. Now, as clinical adoption happens more frequently, especially on the heels of inclusion of optical genome mapping as a first-line test, recommended by medical society guidelines, it becomes just that. It's the first-line test. So it becomes the standard of care. And so when the sample is submitted to the laboratory, the laboratories typically follow these guidelines very closely, and so they will apply optical genome mapping first. That's only part of our vision, because as you know, you're an expert on optical genome mapping. It doesn't detect sequence variants. But there is a solution out there that does that really well. It's next generation sequencing. And so what we believe is an outstanding future state, genome sequencing, is recommended as a first-line analysis for sequence variants. And optical genome mapping could potentially be recommended as a first-line analysis for structural variants. And those two are used in combination and so when you talk about the volume of samples that are going through cytogenetic analysis, now they're being sequenced and mapped every single time because those are the first line recommended tests that medical societies advocate. There's a lot of work to be done between now and then, and as you know, it's a competitive environment and there can be new technologies and new solutions, but that's the vision that we're driving toward. You had about 12 placements this quarter. It's a bit of a decline from the fourth quarter. Does this track with the typical seasonality of the first quarter versus the end of the year that you would normally see in previous quarters? You know, the business as a whole, and Chris mentioned this in his comments, that um, you know, we're accustomed to a, we're, we're, we're accustomed to a, a seasonality there. Um, and Q4 was, you know, very solid for, installations, and I want to be clear here, we're talking about systems that we've installed, and we're not, we're not measuring, you know, the definition of placement is variable in, in the field, and so we're not actually talking about, like, deals that we did, per se, or POs that came in. Uh, we're just talking about systems that were installed and the growth in the install base. That's the most objective metric, but one of the things that I can tell you about it is that we ended the quarter with several systems that uh, were in a backlog for installation, and that backlog was driven by some of the effects of Omicron and COVID, which reduced staffing and caused delays in installation. So I think the answer is we always expect, expected a sequential decline. The overall demand and um, success on the business side was solid, our ability to operationally install them was impacted by COVID, and uh, well, we, we, we're catching up. Now, what are your thoughts on bio nanogenomics? Let me know in the comments down below. And until next time, guys, take it easy. Have a good weekend.